that the current rate, it will take about 52 days for this spill to eclipse the disastrous Exxon Valdez in 1989, the worst oil spill in history. 21 years later, they are still trying to clean it up. The Valdez, you may remember, spread 11 million gallons of oil over Alaska's Prince William Sound. It damaged 1,300 miles of shoreline. By comparison, this Gulf spill could hit only 300 miles of shoreline, a smaller amount of coastline, but a lot of jobs and wildlife are at stake, and we all remember those images of the oil-soaked birds from the Exxon Valdez disaster. It's estimated that one quarter of a million animals died. And Sam Champion is in Venice, Louisiana tonight. He's just returned from flying over these fragile areas threatened by the spill. Sam? And, Diane, they are spectacular. The about 500,000 acres that is the Mississippi River Delta, most of it right at sea level, but at any given time, it can be underwater. And that's why it's not just the edges that are in danger. It's the whole delta. This part of the Gulf of Mexico is an area of incredible biodiversity. If it can't be contained, the oil spill threatens more than 400 species of wildlife. Every organism from native grasses to oyster beds to nesting pelicans would be affected. The Louisiana coast there has about 40% of the U.S. wetland area. And so it's a spawning ground for fishing. It's a an area for birds, uh, wildlife, habitats, and so on. Experts say this is uncharted territory because it's an uncontrolled spill that is constantly pumping oil into a highly productive coastal estuary. To keep the toxic oil from reaching shore, cleanup crews are using oil booms. Here's how they work. The boom is a long linked plastic float. One side is weighted down, the other side inflatable so that it sits up in the water with two thirds below the surface, creating a barrier for the oil. After it's contained, the oil can then be either skimmed or burned off. But only 33 miles of booms have been deployed while 300 miles of coastline are under threat. Michelle Kelly coordinates animal rescues at the Audubon Aquarium in New Orleans. She and her team are bracing for an onslaught of distressed wildlife. Now, they're able to wash the oil off the animals, but it's the oil that is ingested that's the bigger concern. For all of the animals, the oil affects their lungs and toxic. So it can go into their system and cause a high toxicity level. Um, and at that time, they can die from exposure from it. That certainly happened after the Exxon Valdez spill. Though this spill could be bigger, it may be easier to clean up. The Valdez was carrying heavy crude oil, while the current Gulf spill is a different kind of oil, light, sweet, crude, a type that's easier to clean up, but is still highly toxic and a real threat. Now, we spent the day talking to people who are in the seafood industry, and around here, that could be just about anybody. They're so concerned that they've called an emergency shrimp and oyster season. Now, what that means is they said, get your boats out of here. Get what you can before the oil gets in. It's not when it'll be here, they think.